Welcome to Imperfect Momming. Our children are constantly looking to us for examples. The term role model doesn't quite cut it here. We are shaping their worldview with every move we make. You see, it's not in the lectures we give or moments where we are actively attempting to teach them. It's in the micro movements we make, the unconscious ways in which we navigate life. We are constantly teaching our children how to show up for themselves, their friends, their future partners, and even their future children. So what can we do to ensure we are raising thoughtful, compassionate, self-aware human beings? We have to become them ourselves. No one is perfect, but we can still all be better, and it starts with self-healing. Let's get to it. Welcome back to Imperfect Momming, and we have a very special guest today, uh, Beverly. Welcome to Imperfect Momming. Hi, thank you so much for having me. Really glad to be here. Absolutely. Tell us a little bit about who you are and what you do. So I am just recently made the transition from my day job being in law enforcement, where I was a civilian and I worked in the research division, to moving more into like esoteric and healing work. So I am a tarot reader, a life coach, a certified meditation and breathwork teacher. Well, but like, <laughs> so we had a little pre-conversation <laughs> before I hit record and I heard language that I don't always hear from people. Um, you know, there was like, so I heard you say meant to be and and other like, if this is what's supposed to happen and just little clues that I pick up on to see about, you know, where people are in their spiritual journey. Um, and I kid you not, um, like I got into tarot cards mm. um, may, uh, less than a year ago because um, I'm a huge Buffy the Vampire Slayer. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> fan. My son's yeah. name is Xander. <laughs> oh, I love that. <laughs> um, and uh, I don't spell it the same way, but um, it's I, I named him after the show and they have a Buffy the Vampire Slayer tarot deck and I was like well I gotta have oh, wow. I, I was not into tarot at all I was like I actually was a little embarrassed and scared to buy it like I didn't want to tell anybody and yeah so, I was the same way it's been a whole journey to sort of like accept it and be like you know yeah not really hiding it because I would sort of hide behind the law enforcement title like oh take me seriously but I do this for fun just for fun and right it's I sort of have woven in the life coaching with the tarot so that's yeah. how I sort of like incorporate the reading. So for me, it's not so much about future tripping. It's more like, how can you get through what is holding you back in the present? Because that's where your power is. Right. And then, you know, create the future that you want. Yeah, no, I love that. And I, I just started a TikTok channel called Alicia Pulled a Card. Um, oh, I love that. Yeah. And um, it's, it's so like, it's actually freeing because this is like a huge part of like my day now that it's and I've come at it so from different perspectives from different like um at like yeah perspectives is is a good way to say it that you know this is a, a a journaling tool it's just it's something to like make me think a little bit deeper and like so yeah, I'm oh, I'm so excited about this conversation. You're yeah, because I actually um, <laughs> I teach tarot basics as one yeah. of the classes that I run and I sort of gear it towards self-connection as well as developing intuition. Yeah. Yeah, that's I mean all you're hitting all the notes and I don't know which way to go. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so I got into it back in 2011 because my mom is actually from Singapore. And over there, we were raised Catholic, but over there, it wasn't taboo. Do you know what I mean? It's sort of like some people see it as like maybe not a good thing or in like a negative fashion. But for me, it, it was like no big deal because over in Singapore, it's like everybody and their grandmother has their own deck. So when I was younger, my mom used to go get readings and I was like, what What are you doing? Like, what are you paying them to do? Right. So I ended up getting my own deck back in 2011 and just kind of playing with it. And then I went public in 2019. 
And then after that, I was working in a small shop and then I had done my first psychic fair in Salem, Mass. And then the 2020 happened and, you know, everything shut down and it was sort of like the unknown. So I just stopped doing it because it was like, you know, having elderly parents and it was unprecedented, the whole thing. So it's like, we didn't know what to expect. So I withdrew and I had signed up for a psychic fair that was supposed to happen in April of 2020. And that one kept getting pushed back, you know, due to circumstances and being in the Northeast, you know, everything kind of stayed closed longer. And that one ended up happening the fall of 2021. And that's what actually got me back out doing it publicly. Yeah. I think that you hit on something that I, that I do want to talk about and it's the taboo of, of tarot. Do you want, like, can you expand on like what, what your I can give an example. Um, yeah. yeah. So for example, I, my first, you know, tarot basics class, I was approached by a library to present to both adults and the teens. And I had thought to myself like, oh, I wonder if people are gonna, you know, sign up or what are they going to think of it? And the night of the adult class, which was the first one, you know, the people that were helping me put together and present, they came up to me and they were like, oh, just so you know, we got several calls and emails wondering why we're bringing, you know, the devil's work into the library. And I was like, oh, I was curious to know, you know, what does the other side think? So, yeah. Yeah. It's really interesting um, because I don't remember anybody ever telling me. Actually, I kind of do. Like, I remember there was some kind of, like, I don't remember all the details, but I re- there was some kind of event where there was an an oracle or fortune teller, or there was something along those lines. And I don't remember who said, like, it's, that's not, like, we just don't believe in that, or that's not okay. Or it, there was some yeah. kind of message, like, this is bad. And... I just carried that around until like to the point where like I I actually went to Walmart to see if they had tarot cards and I was so embarrassed to ask and and I was like this is silly like just ask the question she doesn't know it's for you it could be a gift you know right right (laughs) that's like your ego mind trying to sort of be like oh it's not about me like you know don't judge me right yeah exactly Um, yeah But to like, look at it in a different light, it's sort of like, um, you know, we live in a world of duality. So both good and bad exists. But I find with respect to whatever it is that people are interested in, it's like intention, right? Like if you have like bad intentions, then that's what it would be. But for most of us that do this kind of work, it's just the intention is to be of service and help people. Yeah. Yeah. My, when I was getting my hair done, I was asking my, um, my hair lady about like, well, how do you, you know, what do you, how do you feel about, um, I think I specifically asked her about tarot and she, um, she went down the whole rabbit hole of like the evil spirits and, and all of, and all of that. And it was, um, I, I found that really interesting because it's the first time that I asked somebody specifically, like, what, how do you feel about this? And that was the response. Um, I've had some kind of Eh, it doesn't, you know, it's, it, it's neutral to me. And I've had like, really like excited how I was when you said you do that. Yeah, right. um, like, that's the reaction that I've been getting more than than the other. So um, I'm, I'm not surprised that there was a lot of emails and, and phone calls. Yeah, I think they said maybe family. like five to seven. I don't yeah. remember. But okay. um, I've received, you know, backlash, like recently, because I have a Facebook page for like the work that I do. It's, um, hummingbird energy healing on Facebook. Mm -hmm. And I had put out the request at the end of 2023, because I'm not very like vocal about what I do. And I don't really share that much. But there was like a post going around on Facebook where you could like tag your business page and ask your friends to share it. And it's very quick and easy to just hit like two buttons and hit invite all. So everybody was inviting people from their friends lists. And I was surprised how many people actually ended up doing that. But I had one individual come from somewhere and he started, you know, clicking the angry button on all of my posts and he started commenting like, you know, you need Jesus and things like that. And I feel like 
he's the type to go around almost like a keyboard warrior because he was posting so quickly like paragraphs of stuff that it was like okay you must have that on your desktop and you're just copy pasting yeah but it, sure. to me it was like wow I haven't like experienced this but luckily you know Facebook just has that handy dandy block button and it right? just took everything out yeah yeah, no, that's it was like, huh, that's kind of an extreme response. And to feel the need to go, you know, hit yeah. so many comments with all that. So let's talk about the flip side of that, that like, so how has tarot helped you and people that you work with? So for myself, like I was talking about the self connection. So I actually don't do my own readings, because oftentimes it's like I'm too close to the situation. And I can't sort of like discern what the cards are saying. It's very like hindsight is 2020 because something will happen and I'll be like, oh, like that's what that card meant. But I had no idea because it was like trying to make sense of it, but I don't know. And then you're dealing with like ego versus intuition. So for me, it's um being of service. So I delved in a lot into like astrology and stuff. So my north node is in Virgo, which means to I'm here to be of service to others. So that where the com combination of the life coaching came in it's like instead of being like all right we're gonna future trip and you know tell me what's gonna happen it's more like getting them to notice where they're holding themselves back like where they're playing small and where you know they can make small changes to create change yeah I I love that so much that like especially about the reading your own cards um I mean, there's, there's times where I would look at a card, especially in the very beginning, I pulled a card and I was, and there was a, a phrase in the description that mm. said something along the lines of, um, that you're a rule breaker or break the rules or something like that. And it didn't make oh. sense at that moment. And later that day I was in a, a group coaching setting and where the the facilitator of um, this session was, you know, think of a time and think of a story that you want to change. And I had I'd done so much work with my my story around my dad um, that I was like, I'm tired of like talking about like I like I'm good with my dad. I love him. Like I've rearranged like I'm tired of that story. Like Let's you've done the work to I've move through. That. Yeah. Right. I was like, let's pick a different story. And so I picked a different story. And what ended up coming out of my mouth was, uh, was, I'm just gonna say it like, fuck the rules. And I was like, Oh, that's what that card was talking about. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so it's like suddenly it made sense, right? That's the hindsight is 2020. <laughs> Absolutely. And um, yeah, it was in and, and so I've been using cards as as symbols. Um and, you know, to kind of dive more into my what's going on in my subconscious. And you said that your business name was Hummingbird something. And as soon yeah, as Hummingbird Energy Healing, Hummingbird Energy Healing, as soon as you said Hummingbird, I stopped listening because like my computer yesterday or the, the day before, um, when I woke it up, there's a picture of a hummingbird. Oh, wow. On the screen. And um, to me, hummingbirds represent my grandma. And I was like, okay, my grandma has, there's a message that my grandma has. Yeah, I love that. So, yeah. And so maybe you're the, maybe you're the deliverer of said message. So we'll continue. Right. <laughs> <laughs> I've had that. I've had, you know, instances where people come in. So my like sign is the penguin, mm. right? Because they symbolize, um, within the darkness there's light mm. so anytime it's like i'm having a hard time or something's going on it's like oh there's a penguin <laughs> yeah you know my so my um a, a friend of mine started so there's an app called marco polo um and it's like i love this app and i've i, I need like referral credits or whatever what's, what's it called when you're um when you get paid for letting having people sign <laughs> Like affiliate. <laughs> Thank you. I can never yeah. remember that word. I need an affiliate link for that that app because um there's a free version, but there's a paid version also. Um, but my uh one of my friends added me and another uh girl to a, a group. So basically you record video messages back and forth and you can watch them live, like a live 
Facebook or whatnot, or you can, it's like leaving a message, but it's leaving a voice message or a video message. It's oh, really, I love that. It's a really cool app. Um, and she created it for the three of us specifically to pull cards for each other um, and for the group, for ourselves and for the group. And um, the, the, I mean, all morning this morning, it's been like talking about different cards. I have five cards on my desk from this group that <laughs> were just going all around, just adding to the messages, adding to the, um, to the meanings. And it's, it's, fun and like it raises my vibration it's a good way to get the practice as yeah. well as connection good and way. community yeah for sure yeah I just started my own podcast show and yesterday I had a friend come on like for a guest recording and as she was talking it was like I was being shown different cards so I would like share with her what was coming up and she was like yeah that makes so much sense it's like really funny how that was happening because I've never had that happen before yeah that is really cool. So um you so you don't do future stuff. Um is there my internet connection is a little unstable so hopefully we can hear everybody can hear fine. <laughs> Cuz future you have to be careful with it. Yeah, your video is paused. Um so in terms of the you know future it's almost like the future is unwritten and we have free will so you have to be careful with that because it's almost like was it meant to happen like whatever it is the prediction is it's like is that actually going to happen or did you just plant it in their third eye and now they're going to manifest it right so you have to be really careful with that yeah and i i think what is what's good about it is that you can hear something in a reading and decide in that moment, this is not the path that I'm going to take. So for example, if you, in a reading, the person wants to know if they're going to get divorced and the reading is leaning towards yes, but then because the reading leans towards yes, they go and get uh, counseling and do some inner work and do some couple counseling. And now the marriage is saved. So it, it depends on, it's like you said, it's about intention. Like what is, are you, is your intention to show up for them to tell you what's going to happen? Or is your intention to, to hear a message and then make a choice on your own? Right. It's, I always try to empower the individual because it's mm -hmm. like they have free will and it's their life and it's going to play out however their soul and themselves wanted it to. Yeah. And so in, in your coaching, do you, do they come to you for, for reading and then you coach them or do you, they come to you for coaching and then you pull a card or like, how do you. So right now it? it's primarily set up as coming for readings. And then I just kind of weave the coaching into it. So yeah. I'm not sure like your reading style, do you do like reverse cards to show like the opposite meaning? Um, it, I'm still in, um, like when I pull a card, I'll think about like, what does the card say to me? And I have like a, uh, oh, like negative connotation towards, mm -hmm. um, reverse cards. Reverse. And, um, so I, I couldn't, I wouldn't be able to ignore the fact that it's reversed. Yeah. So I do. It's usually like, I'll coach on whatever is reversed or whatever is coming out as like holding them back or blocking yeah. them. Yeah. No, I like that. Yeah. But it's always like asking questions and getting them to empower themselves. Like I don't really like lead or tell them like, oh, I've experienced this. This is what I've done. It's like, it's that's not how they're going to go, you know, get their lessons and how it's going to unfold properly. Yeah. So one of the cards that came up this morning was from an Oracle deck. Um, and it was the card was empty well. Mm. And time to replenish. And when I, um, so my friend pulled the card and she said, I don't have time to read the description. So one of you read it for me because she's jumping on the road. And I, so I just read the description. I didn't input any of my own thoughts into it. And she came back thinking like the empty well or saying that the empty well for her was her finances. Mm. And my thought was, that's not my story. My, my, my finances are not an empty well but then it made me think about what do I think what is an empty well for me and that was powerful so I'm like I'm loving the group 
So yeah, because it's getting your like your trajectory of like sort of like, okay, I need the book as like training wheels versus what is my intuition telling me? What does it make me think of? And how do I feel about it? Yeah. Yeah. It's it's fun. And at the very least it it um my fiance who doesn't, you know, believe in a lot of um I call it the woo-woo stuff. Um <laughs> <laughs> and I say that in a loving way. So if anybody thinks that it's a derogatory, it's it's not, but um, or that's not my intention behind it. But um, you know, he's he said at the very least, what it does is for for people is it it keeps you thinking towards the positive. So like when I see the angel numbers, it's like, oh, there's a message, right? And it's like, what is it that I need to know in this moment? What is, what's trying to be communicated? And it keeps me in a positive mindset versus, you know, a lot of times we'll, we'll see something, something will trigger a negative thought for us and we go down this negative spiral. Um, and so it kind of keeps you in, you know, more of a positive spiral. It keeps me, I'll, I'll own it for myself. It keeps me in a positive spiral. Right. Or helps you get out of like the funk or whatever it is. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. So it's like a tool as opposed to like, you know, this big negative thing that people right. are afraid of. Yeah. So you said you're a mom of a seven year old. Um, I think you said boy. Yep. Yes. Yeah. I was uh, smiling to myself when you were talking about your son's name because my son's name is Dylan and I had named him after the actor Dylan McDermott only to find out later his real name is Mark. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so but yeah, he's seven. Yeah. So do you use um, your coaching skills or even tarot reading skills in your, in your parenting? Not so much in the parenting. I'll say the life coaching. Yes. Cause it's like having compassion and like understanding where he's, coming from and I do um a lot of like generational work so it's like having the awareness of what's being passed down and why because I found you know once my son was born it's almost like how I was parented just started coming out automatically it was like oh this is how we do things or you know something would happen or he would you know drop something and I would get all upset and I would be I'd pause and be like why am I so upset and it's like oh this is something my mother would get upset about so it's like in that moment, I could pause and be like, do I need to get upset about this? Like, can I just let it go? And it's sort of like changing how things are and like what's being passed down is always my biggest question. I, I love that because what I've, I've heard a teacher say that I, I resonate with this, that when when we put on a role of mom or wife, it opens up the files that we have downloaded from elsewhere. So, you know, where we've downloaded from, um, from TV, from our own parents, from our parents' marriage, from other people's programming, right? So programming. the programming for sure. Um, so we, it opens those program files when we put that hat on, because it's not relevant before that. So it's like, you put on the hat of mom and now your mom files have opened up. Right. And depending on how you felt about your childhood, your mom, your parent, you know, how you were parented will create different situations. And my son was actually a mirror for me when, mm -hmm. um, because he's, he's so curious and it was always important to me to whatever his question was of why to always answer that question and so my one of my favorite stories to tell sort of like nurturing the curiosity right absolutely and he still asks why and and there's sometimes where I'm like okay there's you're at you're at a point where asking why is not always going to be received well and so you're not going to know that it's not received well until you ask why. And so you need to remember for yourself, this is not me about me. It's about that person's relationship with the word why. And, um, you know, so he asked me why I get mad when I spill on myself. 
<laughs> oh dear. <laughs> Cause I would, I three days in a row, I think I spilled coffee on myself, coffee or water, whatever else I was drinking, I spilled on myself and I got mad. Um, and he's like, why do you get mad when you spill on yourself? And I was like, I don't know. Cause my dad huh. did it. Cause my dad, ah, got, there cause I watched is. my dad get mad when he'd spill on stuff and right. And then several years went by after this conversation and I spilled something on myself and it was like, <gasps> instead of yeah. right. Like, yeah. Yeah. You were able to change it in the, the moment reaction because changed. you had the awareness, right? He brought the, the flashlight and mm -hmm. you were like, oh, okay. Yeah. And he brought the awareness of the, of the change too, because when I went, <gasps> he went, what's going on? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> like, oh, so he oh, noticed oh, that's oh, funny okay. yeah he did yeah so what advice would you give um to our mom listeners so I would say don't be so hard on yourselves it's because you know that might get results it's like try to notice like your inner voice and how it talks to you because you're the one who's with you for the entire journey of your whole life so it's like why not be kind to yourself because that's how you'll go out and be kind to others as well as how others will energetically receive you and treat you. Mm. That is, Oh, that is so deep. And we could have a whole conversation about that. Like, right. <laughs> yeah. I was, I was speaking to a mom this morning about, um, you know, how she feels perceived in this group that she's in, that she walked in and, and, um, and like nobody connected with her no one said hi to her and even the leader is this strong like female personality which triggers her mom wound mm. and she's like I'm thinking about leaving this group and I said well let's work on the mom wound and if and see if your energy shifts because she might be responding to this energetic thing and we just don't even know a lot of people are so unaware of why they're reacting to the things that they're reacting to because it's all tucked in the subconscious it's all tucked away and we don't we don't realize that that you know you look like my friend sarah and so now if i have positive feelings about my friend sarah i'm gonna have positive feelings towards you but if you have if i have negative feelings about this person sarah like i'm i'm gonna have a different energy with you just based on your looks and we you haven't even opened your mouth yet right like, have all these stories and all these things that it's that like, judge the book by the cover right yeah, we have all we're so unaware of all of this stuff and um hopefully this conversation will open up your awareness that's to the listeners obviously <laughs> is there a book um that has been instrumental in your personal development journey so right now I'm actually reading Mothers Who Can't Love. And I can't remember the author, but that one talks about the mother wound. You reminded me of it as you just mentioned that um, because I didn't have such a great relationship with my mother. And I'm very for finding out like curiosity wise, like why people do what they do. Mm -hmm. So this one reading about the mother wound and getting more into, you know, how it was raised and why and why is our relationship like that? allows me to move into compassion mm -hmm. that's a, the coming from compassion I think I've heard you say it twice in on this call um coming from a place of compassion will completely shift how you show up in the world my coach once one time said um everyone has a story you don't need to know what it is to know that they have a story mm. you can just have compassion for that inner child that has a wound that's unhealed and it's hard it can be hard because when he said that it triggered something and I was like well screw that person's pain because that person Ooh. was hurting me <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, that's the yeah. thing when we don't do the shadow work it's like that saying like hurt people hurt people mm -hmm. so the shadow side is a lot of the sides of us that are like wounded and yeah. just need love and acceptance yeah I've heard that term shadow work um and possibly because of the way that I was raised or just the connotation that I have towards um you know 
the dark side of things like the shadow work to me it sounds mm. like it's not this amazing beautiful thing that I that I know that it is but just that term to me actually has to uh, trigger some negative connotation which is super interesting because as soon as you said shadow work it reminded me oh yeah that's not a, that's not a phrase that yeah. I like but I like right, doing maybe it's something work. to explore right yeah uh, like dig it. it's sometimes it's like we fear what we don't know so it's like oh what do you mean there's a shadow side like we all like sunshine and rainbows mm -hmm. but it's the world of that we live in of duality that it's like both need to coexist right and that reminds me of another card that's on sitting here on my desk it's the this one jumped out at me it's called feast of plenty and it says choices and their consequences and i was like i want to focus on the feast of plenty and right <laughs> not the consequences <laughs> right that's the thing but if like it's sort of like those that chase like the love and light and the sunshine and rainbows it's like you wouldn't know that that's what was going on if you didn't have like the grief and the hardship and the challenges it's yeah. like you need both to be able to appreciate it i agree yeah well i love this conversation this was probably one of my favorite of recent history and um i i'm so glad that um i'm gonna say that i'm so glad my son got sick so that i had a cancellation oh well i, it, I call it divine timing because you know yeah. i kept looking at your schedule and i was like wow all the way in march wow yeah. but it just it ended up going the way it was supposed to so divine timing yeah I love that so where can our listeners find you so I'm on Instagram you can find me at hummingbird underscore energy underscore healing and I'm also the host of ready set share podcast so that is on Instagram as the dot rss podcast I love that I love the the I love your business name for reasons the earlier. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and the podcast. I love that as well. So, um, well, thank you for being um, a guest on the podcast today and for um, pouring into the, into our listeners, but also into me um, and answering all my curiosity questions. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so far much for having me. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. So there will be another episode of Imperfect Momming for you all coming next week. And until then, keep healing. Bye, guys. Thank you for tuning in to Imperfect Momming. It's time for us to step up and realize that our power is not in trying to shape our children. Our power lies in shaping ourselves into the people we want our children to model themselves after. Don't just do it for your kids. Do it for yourself. When you become a more self-aware, compassionate, and confident person, you and everyone around you benefit. For more information about me and my work, visit alishalyons.com. That's A-L-Y-S-I-A-L-Y-O-N-S.com. See you next time.